if a picture is worth a thousand words, that video speaks volumes, doesn't it? As we talk about where our community is headed, it's nice to have that pictorial history of where we've been and how we got to where we are. Hello, I'm Chris Law, and it's my honor to stand before you today as mayor of Garden City to deliver the 2016 State of the City Address. Before I begin, I'd like to thank staff for putting that video together. Garden City community has a long history of working together to meet its goals and achieve healthy growth. Through a spirit of cooperation between the city, Finney County, Garden City Community College, and USD 457, as well as partner agencies including the Finney County Economic Development Corporation, Garden City Area Chamber of Commerce, Downtown Vision, and the Finney County Convention and Visitors Bureau, Garden City has experienced steady growth over the past two decades. With relationships like these, a lot can happen in a short amount of time. In the past few years, Garden City has welcomed new housing, retail establishments, and industrial developments. With this growth, it is also important to maintain our existing infrastructure. That's why the city uses its citizen-based capital improvement planning process, which I know many of you have been involved with. More on that later. While we don't have time to talk about everything going right in Garden City, I would like to hit the highlights. In February, the Commission met, as it does annually, to establish its goals for the year. Those goals are as follows. To develop fully improved, price certain industrial property. To continue housing development. To continue to expand Garden City Regional Airport. To develop a financial preparedness plan to achieve independence for the electric utility in order to maximize benefits to existing and prospective city customers, to address water regionally in a manner that preserves the quality and quantity of the resource, and to continue to encourage retail development. On the industrial side of things, 2015 saw the start of the largest single economic development project in city history. Meadowlark Dairy Nutrition, LLC, a subsidiary of the Dairy Farmers of America, broke ground on a $238 million milk drying facility that will process 84 truckloads of milk daily from dairies in southwest Kansas. Significant construction progress has been made this year, and the plant expects to begin operation next year with its product market globally. As part of this economic development effort, the city will work with the developer and the Kansas Department of Transportation on a project to widen US 83 between the river bridge and railroad bridge to accommodate the plant traffic. In addition to the benefits of having this plant in Garden City, we have the opportunity to use fully treated and recycled wastewater as a new source for non-potable industrial and municipal uses, including irrigating city parks and green spaces. This will help extend our valuable water resource well into the future. Another important industrial project is the transload facility that broke ground earlier this month. The Garden City Transload Facility KDOT is providing a total of $4.5 million in funding, $3 million from the State Rail Service Improvement Fund for the rail side work, which is now underway, and $1.5 million in economic development funding for reconstruction of farmland road, which will start next spring. While KDOT's partnership and support were integral to this project, so were local partnerships. Groundwork for the rail side expansion of this project was laid when the city, county, and Finney County Economic Development Corporation worked together on the ethanol plant project and again on the TPNL project. In addition to working with the state to secure funding for the new facility, the city acquired the former ConAgra plant property, which will be transferred to the Garden City Industrial Park LLC, who will develop and operate this new transload facility. The property also has associated water rights that will help the city reach long-term water supply goals. The city also continues to examine existing inventory of industrial land in order to identify what may lack in infrastructure improvements or price certainty. We're working to identify infill properties that would be candidates for industrial development and identify in conjunction with Finney County next generation industrial locations. On the housing side of development, we've recently seen the continuation of more than one million in privately funded infrastructure in new residential areas including Clarion Park Estates, Chapel Heights, East Cambridge Square Phase 2, <clears throat> and Prairie View Acres. In addition, we're working to encourage residential infill development and support phased senior living. 
the next commission goal is to expand Garden City Regional Airport. Improvements at Garden City Regional Airport last year saw the completion of a new 1.4 million taxiway connection on the crosswind runway, resulting in safer operations for airport users. This year, work began on a new taxi lane access to the aircraft rescue and firefighting station and access to the fuel farm. The FAA funds 90% of the airport projects with the city funding 10%. American Airlines continues to provide two nonstop flights per day to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport with 26,775 passengers departing from GCK last year. This level of employment allows the city to maintain primary airport status and receive an annual entitlement of $1 million for construction projects from the Federal Aviation Administration. One airport project that will be completed next year is the design of terminal building renovations and access road improvements. Another City Commission goal is to develop a financial preparedness plan. As part of this goal, City staff is working to evaluate annual cash balance targets and tax funding and utilities. The City is also working to identify economic triggers and appropriate response to employ in the event of a natural or financial disaster. The fifth goal is to achieve independence for the electric utility in order to maximize benefits to existing and prospective City customers. This is a goal that the city has been working on for some time. Construction of the Jamison Energy Center was a significant step toward achieving independence for the electric utility. This change stabilized the city's electric rates and resulted in a small decrease in the customer charge to all of our customers. As a member of the Kansas Municipal Energy Association, the Energy Agency, and the Southwest Power Pool, our excess generation capacity is sold on the open market. This brought $83,237 in revenue to the electric utility last year. The next goal concerns water, our most important resource. To address water regionally in a manner that preserves the quality and quantity of the resource, the city is present and active in regional and statewide water policy discussions. We're working to reduce water use by city departments and model next generation landscaping. We're also working to develop residential and water use reduction strategies. Additionally, we continue our water line cleaning program and continue to replace infrastructure as needed. Finally, the last goal is to continue to encourage retail development. Shulman Crossing is our largest retail center and continues to expand. Several small shops and two restaurants were added to the inline stores in 2015. 2016 saw the groundbreaking for the new Lewis Motors Toyota Nissan dealership. Stone Development, also at Shulman Avenue and the Bypass, completed construction on a 94-unit Ascend Hotel, which opened in May, and a 25,000-square-foot indoor water park is scheduled to open soon. As part of this goal, we're looking to expand the stormwater management system on the east side of town. Toward the end of 2015, the city created the Downtown Development Fund, a new fund aimed at spurring revitalization of the Central Business District. The fund was designed to encourage development of vacant properties and revitalization of existing buildings by removing the hurdle of high costs associated with efficiency upgrades, demolition expenses, environmental remediation, facade renovation, interior remodeling, and second story residential commercial development. We've already seen a tremendous amount of interest in use of these funds. There are other issues that are important for our community, even though they aren't articulated in the Commission goals. As I'm sure you're aware, quality of life issues are an area of focus for our local government. The city completed approximately $90,000 in sidewalk projects in 2015 and 2016. Split between its cost sharing program for repair and replacement of damaged sidewalks and new sidewalks that filled in gaps in existing neighborhoods. The city also constructed a walking trail around Fennett Park. Construction on a pedestrian and bike pathway extending from Campus Drive to Walmart along Kansas Avenue will be finished in the next few weeks. The cost for the project is being shared by the city and the Kansas Department of Transportation. Since the beginning of 2015, the city, in a partnership with USD 457 and the Recreation Commission, has also made significant upgrades at Clint Leitner Field and Fansler Field, including the construction of a new backstop wall, relocation and enlargement of dugouts, relocation and enlargement of bat and cages, construction of new bullpens for both home and visiting teams, installation of artificial turf for batting cages and bullpens, replacements of sidewalks, and relocation and extension of the parking lot fence. Fencer field improvements included extension of the outfield fence to
to accommodate high school and Babe Ruth baseball, removal and replacement of infield dirt with a red clay sand mixture, and replacement of the field irrigation system. And of course, our parks and green spaces are second to none. Over the past two years, the City Commission has authorized $11 million in capital improvements, $6.1 million in 2015 and $4.9 million in 2016. Major capital improvement projects have included additions to the Utility Service Center and the Central Fire Station in order to improve efficiencies and better serve the needs of Garden City residents. While the renovations to the Utility Service Center are complete, the fire station remodel is expected to be finished in 2017. A major project at Lee Richardson Zoo earlier this year was the renovation of the rhino yard that is now home to two black rhinos. At Valley View Cemetery, a columbarium was constructed as a final resting place for cremated remains. These are all projects that went through our CIP process. The CIP gives both residents and commissioners a long-range view of projects that may be necessary over the coming five to seven year period. It's one of the most critical policy documents we adopt annually and it relies heavily on our residents. Residents can suggest projects and serve on the committee that ranks the importance of each project before the CIP is reviewed by the governing body and before any projects are submitted for approval in the budget. If you have a project you would like to see completed or if you'd like to serve on the CIP committee, please let us know. In 2017 budget, 4.55 million is allocated to CIP projects. One of these projects is the widening of Kansas Avenue from Main Street to 3rd Street. The project will widen Kansas Avenue by 13 feet, add a center left lane for left turns, and upgrade the sidewalks. During the project, a water line will also be replaced between Main and 3rd Streets. An additional project on Kansas Avenue will be reconstruction between Belmont Place and Anderson Street. Other 2017 CIP projects include the design of the terminal building renovations at Garden City Regional Airport, and the project to widen US 83 between the river and BNSF bridges. As you've likely heard me say before, projects like these do not come together overnight. They are the result of intelligent effort and dedicated partnerships, past and present. Our community's progress is directly tied to all of its residents, and I'd like to encourage you to get involved. Whether it's through the CIP, one of our other advisory boards, Citizens Academy led by staff each spring, interaction on social media outlets, or attendance at city commission meetings, your input is valued and appreciated. Government at any level operates better with an engaged citizenry, and that is true especially at the local level. Despite differences and disagreements, we can, and I think we do, model a people self-governing to achieve the community they desire. We've been poked, prodded, and studied by other communities national foundations, and news services for 30 years, sometimes out of envy, and sometimes out of fascination. Their conclusions vary, but their focus is consistent. Our story as a community is in our people. Because of our people, the state of our business is strong and healthy. Because of our people, the state of our schools is strong and healthy. Because of our people, the state of our social sector and churches is strong and healthy. Because of our people, the state of our public safety network is strong and healthy. Because of our people, the state of our public infrastructure is strong and healthy. Because of our people, the state of our city is strong and healthy. Thank you.